In the early days of the COVID pandemic, friends and family of a devoted mother from Florida were stunned to receive texts saying that she was sick with the coronavirus. Peter Van Sant investigates a story that's far more sinister than that in the COVID cover-up, searching for Gretchen Anthony. On the morning of March 23rd, 2020, friends and family of Gretchen Anthony started receiving disturbing texts. Gretchen Anthony starts to send text messages stating that she has been diagnosed with the coronavirus. Crochet Mixon, an assistant state's attorney for Palm Beach County, says the text described Gretchen's worsening symptoms. I'm really sick, says one. And in another, I am on a ventilator. The family finds the text messages that they're getting from Gretchen to be worrisome, alarming. But Kelly Hanna says her friend Gretchen was the picture of good health. She worked out at the gym very hard. She took her health very seriously. Mixon says friends and family became distraught when they couldn't reach her. She never answered her phone. It would go to voicemail. Yes. So they asked police to do a check on Gretchen's home, where a neighbor told them she heard something terrifying. I heard a really serious woman scream, like um, just screaming, like she was being attacked. Investigators became even more alarmed when they couldn't reach her estranged husband, fitness trainer David Anthony. Neither one can be found. Police learned Gretchen wasn't in the hospital with COVID, so they searched her home for clues and found signs of a struggle. And they noticed security cameras had been removed from the walls. They asked Gretchen's service provider to pull the video from the cloud. The images showed a man lurking on Gretchen's patio the morning the neighbor heard the screams. There comes a point where this person that we see grab Gretchen, muffle her screams, and take her into the garage. This person looks up at the camera. And what do you see? We see David Anthony looking up into the camera. Well, Peter Van Sant is with us now to talk more about this case. So, Peter, she's not answering her phone, but she's texting from the phone. Obviously, it wasn't her texting. Did police determine who was sending those text messages? Yeah, pretty early on, they thought it was her estranged husband, David Anthony, particularly since she was making no calls. Uh, she had a, had a 12 year old daughter and the fact that she wasn't answering anyone else's text messages or phone calls, they thought pretty early on it was him. And also they started pinging these phones and discovered that Gretchen's phone was traveling in da with David's phone heading west on the interstates uh, toward New Mexico. So we've got the pinging of the phone, we've got the security cameras, the text messages, obviously tech played a pretty big role in the manhunt for David Anthony. This is uh, one of the most fascinating 48 hours I've be ever been involved in because I've never had so much security and police video. You had a taste of it in the mm -hmm. story that you just watched in that we have body cams as people are questioned. You have an arrest on body cams. You have security cameras from the victim's home. On and on, it's a remarkable journey as we take the viewers step by step through this investigation and finally an arrest in this case. So how important was the evidence from Gretchen's security cameras that uh, police were able to retrieve from the cloud? It was absolutely crucial because at the end of the day, you have video that shows Gretchen apparently dead and you can see her estranged husband, David Anthony, in that frame. There's a lot of shadowy video, but eventually his face appears on that video, and so it is crucial in this case. Uh, without it, they may not have been able to get uh, the plea deal that eventually they do. Well, when Peter Van Sant says that this is one of the most fascinating cases he's ever done, that says something, because Peter, you have done some really uh, incredible reporting for 48 hours. I know this is going to be a riveting case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne-Marie.